methods for solving OD initial value problems. We have looked at the algorithms, we have looked at the way algorithms are derived and now one of the most crucial aspects is how do I select the integration step size. Okay? I am at some point T n, I want to move to T n plus h. What should be uh, integration step size h? It is a crucial decision when you, a crucial decision when you uh, have to implement uh, or when you have to use a OD IVP solver. Now, I was describing one approach uh, in which uh, you are not really worried about the analysis, but a practical approach to deal with this problem is variable step size solver or variable step size implementation. This variable step size approach can be used only when you are going from T n to T n plus 1 without using the information from the past. Okay? So, Range Kutta can be used. Alternatively, you could even tailor orthogonal collocations if you want using variable step size. So, variable step size is something that is possible when the method involves only going from only you need information at uh, time T n you do not need past information about derivatives, you do not need. So, multi step methods are difficult to tailor for uh, variable step size, but the other Rangukita methods can be easily tailored for variable step size implementation. So, here I do not have to worry about what should be the right step size. I can just uh, work with uh, a changing step size. I make a uh, on the spot, on the fly decision as to what should be my integration step size and next time it could be different, next time it could be uh, you know smaller or larger it depends upon how the system is behaving in a particular region. So, uh, let me just write down the steps in the algorithm that way you will understand what is really happening. Yesterday I tried to explain the philosophy, now let us look at uh, so, my problem is I am given x t n is equal to x n at t is equal to t n and epsilon is epsilon is the tolerance this could be 10 to the power minus 8 or this would be some small value. Now, my first step is to choose step size. Let me let us say we have chosen a step size h1. Okay. Then Now, using this step size h1, what I do is I compute x n plus 1, I am I am choosing to index it as 1, okay? because this is using h1. So, using whatever method I have chosen, it could be RK method, it could be Euler method, Runge Kutta or Euler method, whatever, whatever Runge Kutta class of method I have used. As I said, you could also tailor this for orthogonal collocation. So, whatever method you have chosen to march from T n to T n plus h h 1. So, you can use that and compute x 1 n plus 1. Okay. Now, step 3 now I am calling h 2 which is h 1 by 2. Okay. 
I am calling H2 which is H1 by 2. Okay. And now what I am going to do is, so here uh, just to put the notation correctly, uh, here Okay. So, this is this one is computed at T n plus H 1. Okay. I am calling it as T 1 n plus 1. Okay. n plus 1 see n is the counter n is the counter right n is the count n is the index of time T is actual time. Okay. And we have marched from in this first step 2 we have marched from T n to T n plus H 1. Okay. Now, after I define this H2, my counter will see two steps of H2 will be equal to one step of H1, is not it? Because I have divided this by 2. So, now I have to adjust and redefine my counter. So, now I will call T n plus 1 2 is equal to Okay. The counter will have to advance twice because you are going half step here. So, counter would have to advance twice. Okay. Now, what I do is uh, Now, what I do is I compute x 2 n plus 1 and x 2. Now, 2 here this index 2 is given because this is using h 2. Okay? This is using h 1, this is using h 2 that is why I given index 2 here. Now, as far as the time is concerned okay, t 2 n plus 2 is same as t 1 n plus 1. Right? This, this these two are equal this is equal to this is equal to this okay so what should happen is why you will be wondering why i have given the tolerance the tolerance is, is to check whether the value that you get here and the value that you get here are they two different okay if they are very very close what do you mean by close is using tolerance if they are very close, I accept H1 as my step. Okay. If not, I reset my H1 to be equal to, uh, you know, some some fraction of initial H1. You can halve it or you can make it point uh, seven five or whatever. Okay. So. Now, what I am going to do here is I am going to check whether this relative error, this is remember this is x 2 n plus 2 minus x 1 n plus 1 because they are time matched. Okay. You cannot use matching of n, n and n here. Okay. So, 
if this relative error is very very small okay so whether you make whether you make two steps and go to that point or whether you make one single step it's not making too much difference so we accept we accept this as the next value else what we do is we shrink h okay so we shrink h1 Okay, so what I do is if if the tolerance condition is not met, I shrink my H1. Okay, so I shrink my H1 to H2, that is H1 by 2. Okay, and then I redo the whole thing. I keep repeating till this condition is satisfied. So essentially, I keep shrinking. I start with some guess. The initial guess you have to give. I start with some guess. Okay. Uh, and then you go on shrinking till you get tolerance satisfied. In MATLAB, you have this Rangakutta uh, solver. There are two Rangakutta solvers which can be very easily used RK23 and RK45. Okay. These solvers are actually reasonably very good solvers. They can be used for large class of problems except some stiff equations. What is the stiff business? I will come to that. So, these are variable step size solvers. They will ask you maximum integration interval, okay, and they will also ask you tolerance. Okay, the solution when it comes, it will not be at one solution at the end point. The solution will be profile because it will have shrunk the integration step size to the point where tolerances are met, and then only it proceeds. What is the advantage here? Okay, the advantage of this approach. This is a practical way of solving the problem when you do not know how to choose the integration step size. Unfortunately, this will not give you insights into what is happening, but it, it solves your problem. It does not. Now, we will of course, we will go to the point where we start getting insights or we start understanding why, why this is happening. Before that, I have given or I have described an algorithm which practically solves the problem. Okay. So, when you do not know what the step size to choose, just use variable step size implementation. It is safe. Even if you use Euler with variable step size, it will work. Because even if you make a wrong guess of the step size, it will keep shrinking the step till this condition is met. Okay, so you don't accept till this condition is met. Okay, so that is a practical way out. Now let's start getting into the insights. Earlier we were talking about linear difference equations arising out of iterative schemes right x k plus 1 or e k plus 1 was some matrix s inverse t times e k where e was the error right and k was iteration index now i am going to talk about difference equations in time okay we are going to use difference equations in time so this concept of eigen values is so fundamental that you know it pervades the analysis that we do and those of you who are doing the analytical methods for partial differential equations and ODEs that course also you will appreciate more and more that how this eigenvalues play a role why they are so important. Uh, of course there you get eigen functions and eigenvalues uh, whereas finite dimensional case you get eigen vectors and eigenvalues. Now let us start getting into this business of uh, Convergence analysis. So, this convergence analysis is tightly coupled with selection of step size. So, the two things cannot be really uh, separated. How do you choose integration step size? Will decide whether convergence to the true solution occur or not. Okay. So, these two things are not really separate entities. Okay. Though now we have a fix of how to go about if you do not know anything. Uh, we would still like to get insights into what is what is really going on. Okay. 
it also allows you to compare different methods. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is to do the analysis. Okay. Uh, first of all, I need to know. Uh, see, when when can you analyze whether a particular method is converging to the true solution? Only when you know the true solution, right? If you do not know the true solution, how will you analyze whether a given method is going to the true solution or not? Okay, it's very difficult to do that. So the first criteria is that you should start looking at a system for which true solution is known. Okay. Then only we can start looking at the difference between the true and approximate solution. That is the first first thing. So which are the which are the systems uh, for which we know the true solutions exactly, whether it is scalar or whether it is vector case, is linear differential equations, initial value problem, ODE initial value problem for linear ordinary differential equations, could be scalar or could be vector. So I am going to use linear ordinary differential equations, initial value problem as a benchmark to understand, to get insights into convergence analysis. Okay. How to extend it to a non-linear case, we will worry about it little later. Let us first get some insights as to what is happening and then let us let's see how to extend it uh, to a non-linear case. Okay. So, I am going to consider two kinds of systems. One is dx by dt is equal to a x, x belongs to r and x T n is equal to X n or I am given some you could consider this initial condition you could consider X 0 is X 0 is initial condition whichever way. Okay. The nice thing about this is that A is a constant, A is a scalar, X is a scalar variable, one variable differential equation initial value problem, I know the solution, I know the true solution. Okay. Now, I can use Euler method or whatever Runge Kutta method and see whether you know uh, whether truth goes to the uh, or the approximation goes to the truth and so on. The second the second thing which I am going to look at the second benchmark which I am going to look at is d x by d t is equal to a x x belongs to R n and x t n is equal to x n and a here is a n cross n real valued matrix real valued in the sense all containing all real entries I am taking a shortcut and a is a real scalar. Okay. What is the what is the true solution here for the first case? If I am given x naught, what is the true solution? The true solution x star t, let us call it let us call it star as a true solution, x star t is e to the power a t x naught. If it is x at t n, it will be x n. Okay whether it is x naught or x n does not matter, this is the true solution, this is the true solution. Okay. What about this case? If you are attending the other course, this must have been done, analytical methods. What is the true solution here? e to the power Okay, I'll, if you have not done it, I will derive it in the class, not an issue. So, the true solution here, well, what she is saying also correct, but uh, uh, the true solution can be written here as x star t is e to the power a t, where a is the matrix. I suppose you have been introduced to this e to the power exponential of a matrix. No? Yes or no? How many of you do not know this? Okay, we will talk about it, not an issue. Into x naught, okay, I will derive this, not an issue. So, you can write this as e to the power a t x naught. 
I will derive it for a special case, but the result holds for general case. I will derive this for a case where you have uh, uh, eigenvalues or eigenvectors are linearly independent. So, we can derive this very easily. Other cases requires little more uh, little more work. Okay. So, this is my true solution and now I can use this as a benchmark to compare whether my approximate solution is going to the true solution or not. Okay. So, let us not worry right now about the multivariable case, let us start looking at the scalar case, it is easier to get understanding of or to understand the convergence behavior. So, this will visit later. Okay. So, my true solution is this. Okay. Typically, when I am using some numerical integration method or uh, some solver like uh, RK45 or whatever, I want to go from Xn to I want to go from x n to x n plus 1, right. So, I will write this solution in that format, okay. So, x star t n plus 1, let us take right now step size to be constant. Now, I am not worried about variable step size and all that, let us take constant step size h, okay. x t n plus 1 is e to the power a t n plus h x naught right. And x star t n is e to the power a t n x naught ok. Is this ok? I can combine these two and say that x star t n plus 1 is equal to e to the power a h x star t n. Just check. Is everyone with me on this? I am just expanding this substituting for right. I have just expanded and substituted this. So, these two equations I can combine to write this. Okay. In our notation, this is same as x star n plus 1 is equal to e to the power a h. The notation that we have adopted with that this is x star n plus 1 is e to the power a h x star n. This is the true solution how it should actually evolve. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, explicit Euler method first. Okay. How will you write explicit Euler method? Explicit Euler method is x n plus 1. Now, when I am writing just x no star this is the approximate solution x star is the true solution, x is the approximate solution. Okay. Now, explicit Euler explicit Euler, okay. what is x n plus 1? x n plus 1 is at least today you should know because you are supposed to submit Euler's method and h times today or what is the submission date? Fourth. Okay. So, but it is too close right, fourth is not too far from. So, I can expect that you should know what is Euler method today. So, h times f n right, but what is f n in this case? A x n. So, this I can write here x n plus h a x n right. So, I can write this as 1 plus a h x n. Everyone with me on this? Okay. Now, let us define an error. Okay. Let us define error which is e n. This is 
x star n minus x n ok x star n minus x n this is my error. So, what is this error? This is error between the truth and the approximation ok. Now, if I if I take this as my equation b and if I if I go here and call this equation as my equation a ok. Then I can subtract the two equations and then get the difference equation that governs the error dynamics ok. So, a minus b equation a minus b will give me Okay. Now, do not confuse between this E exponential and or let us do like this to uh, reduce the confusion I will call this epsilon. I will call this error epsilon because you should not confuse with E to the power something. Okay. Okay. This is what I get. Now, I have to convert this into a a difference equation ok. I am going to play a little bit of a trick I am going to substitute for x star n ok in terms of epsilon plus x n and going to do some re adjustment ok. So, this equation this equation let us call it c and this equation let us call it d. So, I am going to combine c and d and get a difference equation. So, combining these two you get E n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus a h plus e to the power a h minus 1 plus a h ok. 1 plus a h sorry I forgot about e n I forgot about e n ok. What I have done is I have eliminated x n on the right hand side of that equation I have written x star n I have written x star but I have removed all that I have done is I have written x n is same as x star n minus epsilon n. If I just use this, this is my definition, this is my definition. I am just using this definition, substituting and rearranging that equation, I get this equation ok, I get this equation ok. So, this this gives us some idea about how the error behaves ok, how the error behaves. It also gives us some insights we will we'll look at the insights and then move on and do some more analysis, but there is one simple insight which you will get here is that uh, error dynamics ok will depend upon this difference. Do you see something familiar here? 1 plus a h, how do you expand e to the power a h? 1 plus a h plus a square h square by 2 factorial plus whatever. If h is very very small, ok, higher order terms can be neglected and this difference will be very very small, ok. If this difference is very very small, then if this difference is very very small, what will govern the error dynamics? 
E n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus A h right 1 plus A h how 1 plus A h behaves uh, will decide okay, uh, whether the error goes to 0, whether the error goes to infinity or whatever happens. If, if this is very, very small, if this can be neglected, okay, can you just look at this term and say what should happen? This is a linear difference equation, scalar linear difference equation. What is the Eigen value? 1 plus a h, one variable, there is no matrix, there is only a scalar. Okay. How will the difference equation behave? How will the difference equation behave? If you, if this, if if you can neglect e to the power a h minus one plus a h, this is approximately equal to zero. This can be neglected. Okay, then you can say that e n plus one is equal to uh, one plus a h e n. Okay, 1 plus a h e n. Let us make a simplifying assumption just to get our understanding correct. Okay, Let us assume that a is strictly less than 0. If a is strictly less than 0, how should the true solution behave? What is the true solution? True solution x star t is e to the power a t x naught. What should happen to x star t as t goes to infinity? If a is less than 0, exponential minus something will exponentially exponential decay, it will go to 0. Okay. If a is less than 0, okay, when will error go to 0? How will this equation behave? See this equation, this equation will behave as E n, you can derive what I am writing here very, very easily, E n will be 1 plus A h raised to n E 0, right, raised to E 0. So what will happen to 1 plus A h? When will it go to 0? When will this go to 0? This quantity should go to 0. Error should go to 0, right? The difference between the truth and the approximation should go to 0. When will it happen? Louder, I can't hear. No, something more than that. Minus phi is less than 1 plus uh, less than 0 then between. minus 5 between no oh, yeah mod of 1 plus a h not 1 plus a h mod of 1 plus a h should be less than 1 the way you should put <laughs> mod of 1 plus a h should be less than 1 ok so this will go to 0 Now, if mod of a h, if mod of a h, 1 plus a h, if this is strictly less than 1, what will happen? E n will tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. Yeah. So you start with E1, there will be a mistake committed one, one step you move, right? Moment you take one step, there will be a mistake committed from x0, E0 is, zero is some initial point, okay. which need not be same as, see because even if you start from the same point, okay, moment you take one step, okay, uh, the solution of approximate solution will be different from the true solution. You start analysis from E1. Okay. 
So, let us start from E 1, this will be n minus 1. Okay. Yeah, good, good question. E 0 will always be 0. Now, uh, let me start from E 1. Okay. So, this will be n minus 1, right? And this is E 1. Now, E 1 is different, even if I start from same, same x naught, okay, uh, x 1 which is calculated using approximate solution is not same as x star 1. Okay, now, let us do the analysis. Fine? Yeah, good thinking. I uh, appreciate your E n minus 1. So, this is, uh, is this fine? So, this this has to go to 0, right? Otherwise, we have we have trouble. So, E n will go to 0 only when this is this is strictly less than 1. Okay. So, this being strictly less than 1, what does it mean in terms of choice of, see this condition is giving you a way to choose H. This condition is giving you a way to choose H for explicit Euler method. If you violate this condition, the difference between the true and the approximate will not vanish. Okay. If you violate this condition, the difference between the true and, but if you obey this condition, what you know is that asymptotically the difference between the truth and approximate will vanish. Okay. So, this is this is a sacred condition for explicit Euler. Can we derive a condition for implicit Euler? What is implicit Euler? Just do it. So, for implicit Euler, my approach is, now one thing, one, one before you proceed, I just want to point out one more thing here. See, look at this, look at this expression here. Whether h is small or whether h is large, it depends upon a. Okay. What is, whether, whether, see that this is very, very important. Okay. What is small h? Somebody might give me some number, 10 to the power minus 6 is small h. But that is not the thing. Whether h is small or h is large, it depends upon what is value of a. It is not, so it depends upon the characteristic equation of or characteristic constant of the equation a, okay, which appears in the equation. When we go to the vector case, this a here will get replaced by eigenvalues. Okay, will get replaced by eigenvalues. So, uh, what is step size? It depends upon the system. It depends upon the system parameters a. That is also an important take home message that it is not independent of uh, what value of what value a has. Okay. Of course, this you can write in terms of you can expand this and write this as uh, inequality in terms of but now let us go move on to uh, ex implicit Euler method. Implicit Euler method is uh, x n plus 1 will be f n plus 1. Okay. Uh, for the linear case, you do not have to do iterations to compute the solution. So, this is nothing but x n plus h a a x n plus 1, right. Okay. So, I can write that x n plus 1 is equal to what? 1 upon 1 minus a h, I just taking this on left hand side, okay. 1 minus a h x n. Right? If a is less than 0, if a is less than 0, 1 minus a h, this will always be positive. Your integration step size is positive. Okay? 1 minus h is always positive. So, 1 plus a positive number, this is always going to be a fraction. Okay. This is this is very nice. Okay. Now, if I am doing analysis for this method, how will 
how will this equation change? What will appear here? 1 upon 1 minus a h 1 upon 1 minus a h okay there are things called Pade approximants and this is a Pade approximation a, a, a type of Pade approximation of e to the power a h 1 upon 1 minus a h is a type of Pade approximation this is a better approximation than Taylor series and truncating okay so now again if this is very very small we could just look at this okay we could look at this and the equation for error will change to see this is explicit Euler this is my implicit Euler okay a is less than 0 when a is less than 0 okay the solution should uh, the true solution asymptotically goes to 0 e to the power minus a t that asymptotically goes to 0 what can you say about the error in this case what is our criteria for convergence this coefficient should be less than 1 strictly less than 1 right now for implicit Euler will this always be less than 1 for any choice of h you see why implicit Euler is better even if you make a wrong guess of h you are still you know you don't have to worry whereas here you have to be very very careful explicit Euler you better be careful about how you choose your integration step size implicit Euler even if you make a wrong cho choice eventually error will go to 0 ok that is why implicit methods ok are many times perform much better than the explicit methods uh, yeah if a is positive no matter what will happen but if, if a is positive it is a difficult problem because the solutions are going to infinity so matching two infinities both will go to infinity actually but the difference between the two infinities can grow blow so difficult to get insights into what is happening if you make an assumption about if you say something about uh, if you take a to be greater than 0 that is why I have taken the case where a is less than 0 we basically want to get insight into how error behaves this if the uh, the system is truly unstable system okay then getting the true unstable solution is a difficult problem comparatively not not an easy problem even a small difference can blow up in this case not here why so i have to i have to make sure in this case so i have to make sure that minus 1 is less than 1 plus ah is less than 1 right so i have to choose my h carefully so that this inequality is not violated can you do analysis for uh, the trapezoidal rule just do it see what what expression that you get see trapezoidal rule is x n plus 1 is equal to x n plus h by 2 f n plus f n plus 1 this is the trapezoidal rule ok what will be equivalent difference equation for e n if I just uh, if I do the algebra ok I will get this thing here is just check whether you are getting the same thing 1 plus h by 2 into a divided by 1 minus h by 2 a right 
okay and again the same same uh, thing we can say you know we can argue that if this 1 plus uh, h a by 2 upon 1 minus h a by 2 if this is close to 0 okay you could only look at how uh, well I will do the I will write down the exact equation when it is not close to 0, but uh, right now this is approximate analysis just. So, in that case in that case this is 1 plus h a by 2 this is 1 minus h a by 2 right and the condition becomes more of this should be less than 1. So, this is this is trapezoidal rule or Simpson's method or whatever okay. this is trapezoidal rule or Simpson's method and in this case it will become right. In fact, this ratio is always going to be a fraction, the ratio is always going to be a fraction. Why? If a is of course, if a is less than 0, then this ratio is going to be a fraction. This is always going to be higher than this. Okay. So, we are assured that this is a fraction. So, trapezoidal rule will converge, the error will you know error will go to 0 asymptotically, will become smaller and smaller. Okay. Uh, actually, the way you should do analysis is uh, I am doing a very hand wavy kind of analysis. The way I should look at this problem is I will write it down a little more, I will write an exact expression. The exact expression I should write is E n plus 1 x star E n plus 1 x star n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus a h by 2 1 minus a h by 2 e to the power a h minus 1 plus a h by 2 1 minus a h by 2 0 and e to the power a h Well, right now when I am writing this equation, I am not doing any hand waving business. I am not saying this is close to 0 and all that. Okay. This is a linear difference equation. Okay. This is B, sorry, this is my, let us call this Z, let us call this vector as Z, Zn plus 1 is equal to if you call this matrix as B and if you call this as Zn this is a linear difference equation z n plus 1 is equal to b times z n. Okay. What is the criteria for convergence? Spectral radius of this should be equal to you can find out the spectral radius of this is a triangular matrix okay. um, and then you can argue about. Uh, the. So, basically we are using this fundamental concept of analyzing qualitative behavior of linear difference equations in this context to understand how the error goes to 0. Same idea. In fact, those of you who will probably continue to work in area of digital control will find the same idea you come back comes back there when you talk about you know design of controllers, digital controllers. They will there again you will use spectral radius of the closed loop dynamic should be inside unit circle same idea. Linear difference equations that is the fundamental applications are different iterative processes or uh, analyzing behavior of integration methods or uh, you know solving some control problem the same idea. In the in the context of iterative methods we had k plus 1 as b times k where k was iteration index here n is n is time okay and my condition still is spectral radius of b should be strictly less than 1. 
Okay. One thing you can you can see is that if a is less than one, if a is less than zero, okay, this part is going to go to zero anyway, asymptotically because x star is going to zero. Okay. Everything will depend upon this and this. Of course, this is going to zero. A is less than zero, so e to the power minus a h is going to zero. So everything finally boils down to this this term. If this term is strictly less than one, approximation error will go to zero asymptotically okay this is what gives us insight into what happens now when i extend this to multivariate case eigen values of a matrix will appear and then we'll have to analyze them we'll see that later